I would like to go over the basic journal entries related to long-term debt. In the first one, we have three-year bond with 8% stated rate that was sold to yield 10% on January 1st, 2014. There's, uh, there are a couple of items that you need to take mental note. Since interest is payable annually, you, we don't have to worry about adjusting the interest rates. Um, also, since the stated rate, so the amount that we are paying, is less than the market rate, we can take a note right off the bat that the bond was sold at the discount. So as we're calculating the bond price, we need to keep that in mind. Face value of the bond was 100000 Bond issue cost um, $5,000. First item that we need to do is calculate the issue price of this bond. We have two uh, cash outflow, outflows related to the bond. The first one is for the principal, 100000 that we will pay in three years from now. And we also will be paying interest, $8,000 annually. How do we get get eight thousand dollars? Take face value hundred thousand times eight percent stated rate times one um, since it's annual rate. So eight thousand uh, dollars for the first cash outflow. You will need to look up present value of a dollar or a lump sum and look for n three n. 10 as your I right here. Here's the factor that you will be able to find. For the second cash outflow, your interest. Again, 8% um, was stated rate, therefore $8,000 times the factor. How would you find the factor? Look up present value of interest or an annuity with your N equals 3 and 10% as your interest rate. Here's that factor. Add up two cash outflows. This amount will be your selling price of the bond. So the amount of discount will be the difference between the face value of the principal and the selling price. You're ready to actually journalize um, the bond issuance. The first item that you will have to do is uh, credit the bonds payable for 100000 Then the next one you can go ahead and record the discount, D for D. Discount has a normal debit balance for $49.73. Um, and we also have unamortized bond issue cost. Bond issue cost is not an asset, it's a deferred charge, but normal balance is debit for $5,000. In some of the problems, you will not have this amount and you just simply ignore it. Um, cash received in this case will be only $90,027 as opposed to $95, the selling price of the bond, Sim simply because we did have the bond issue cost to worry about. I also added a small curveball, so to speak. What will be different if the bonds were issued on April 1st of 2014 as opposed to January 1st? I would suggest writing out the journal entry in the same fashion as if the uh, date of the issuance was not between the interest dates. Once you're done, then make the changes. What will be the changes? Uh, the buyer of the bond will have to advance or prepay to the bond issuer the amount of interest. How would you calculate that? Take your 8% of hundred thousand or eight thousand dollars that we will be paying and multiplied by three out of twelve. Why? We have annual interest, therefore it's twelve months, but from January first up to April first we have three months that the buyer needs to prepay to us um, or two thousand dollars. You can either credit interest expense, which will reduce it or you can also use interest payable. My suggestion in our case will be to use interest expense. It just makes the next journal entry when we're paying interest out a little bit easier to, to deal with. 
and also the same $2,000 will be added to cash received right here. So it would be $92,027. But the rest is the same, so it's not that hard. Once you recorded bond issue journal entry, we're ready to set up a table to amortize our discount. And we will be using effective interest method to, to do that. The basic table is set up in the following fashion. Um, line up the following columns. You will need the date. You will need cash paid. And see for cash amount, you will be using stated rate. That's very important. For interest expense, you're always using market rate or yield rate. Next column will be either discount or premium amortized, and then the last one carrying value of the bonds. Take a look at the very first date. When we issue the bond, the first um, row is almost all empty. The amount of cash paid remains the same. We already calculated it, and it's uh, principal times interest times time. So in our case, you will see 8000 is the same payment every year. As far as the interest expense, remember, we always take carrying bond value on that date and multiply it by the interest rate, in this case, market, 10%. Discount amortized will be the difference between cash paid and interest expense. How would you come up with the carrying value of the bond at the, the end of the year, 2014? Take a look. So you don't get confused. Um, at the at bond maturity, you have to have in this column exactly the amount of your principal. So you have to go up from roughly ninety five thousand to hundred thousand. In this case, that means bond amortization, or the discount of bond amortization, should increase the carrying value of the bond year to year. It's going up. Therefore, the amount of discount amortized will be added to come up with the new carrying value of the bond. For next year, 2015, um, will be the same thing. You will take carrying value on that date, so it will be 96530 times 10%. Here's your interest expense. Calculate discount amortized, and the discount amortized will be added again, and you keep going. In case of a premium, you, your carrying value in the very beginning will be higher than the principal. Therefore, the premium amortized will be subtracted from carrying value of the bond for you to be able to go down. Now, as far as the journal entries, at the end of the year, since we're paying interest annually, we will first write a credit to cash. That's your very first step for $8,000, and see that amount did not change year to year, the same amount as we promised or stated on the bond. The second step, record discount amortization. Look up in the table, so for the first um, term right here, it was 1503, and we credited discount for that amount, and it changes year to year because we don't do straight line. Just simply again look up in the table and uh, pick up the correct amount. After that, your interest expense is a plug-in amount. In this case, amortization of discount will increase your interest expense. 8000 versus 9500 roughly. If we were to have premium premium amortization would have reduced your interest expense. We also have to amortize our bond issue cost. We're doing straight line in this case, uh, $5,000 over three years, so 1667 roughly will be amortized on an annual basis. Simply record it as a debit to bond issue expense and credit your unamortized bond, bond issue cost account. And then at the very end, when the bond matures, you have the very last journal entry as of December 31st, 2016. You need to debit bonds payable and credit cash. There is no discount involved in this since 
the discount on bonds payable has been amortized and now that amount is zero.